Cell phone usage has increased in the last decade. Cellular companies claim there is not enough scientific evidence to prove cell phones are harmful. And scientists say more research needs to be done before we can draw any conclusions. Should we worry? Are cell phones harmful? According to Dr. Andrew McCroskey, there is a reason to be concerned. Now, cell phones <coughs> are a very uh, touchy area for biological effects because we're getting to small and smaller wavelengths. Uh, they have the capacity to, to magnify very easily. There's a technology that is a very low quality of production. You can produce 1,000 cell phone units in fact coming out of factory and it's most likely not one phone out of those top is going to have the same feel and same characteristics as the others. That's how sloppy the, the workmanship is for that technology. While there's some controversy about them, um, the research I've read about cell phones suggests that they are harmful, um, but it depends on how, how much radiation a particular cell phone emits, how long you use it during the day and for how many years you've used it. So if you happen to be a cell phone user and you're on it for several hours every day, uh, then I think your likelihood of developing um, a tumor in your brain will increase. That's according to some of the research that's been done. Those studies actually show that um, there's a latency period for brain cancer with cell phones and that it takes at least 10 years. So people have to use a cell phone within 10 years before the studies show any kind of statistical relationship between users and non-users. We have um, something like 40 to 90 percent increase in genetic problems just by using cell phones. And I'm not talking about the huge use of cell phones on uh, and, and that's even an extremely, extremely weak signal. I'm talking about signals that are uh, something like uh, five to six times weaker than the American standard permitted. Uh, it takes very weak microwave signals to change DNA. Um, microwaves affect neurotransmitters, so they make these drugs do things that they were not designed to do. And uh, so we now have uh, new problems. And of course, <clears throat> many drugs for depression work uh, less effectively. So people uh, think that they're getting the right dose and they're not getting the right dose according to the drugs. However, one thing that, that microwaves do that's interesting um, is that um, they help alcoholics withdraw from alcohol easier, like there's less withdrawal problems. You know, we're playing well with neuro, neurotransmitters, so they, they, that's one thing that they do. Uh, they actually make the body believe that it's having more alcohol than it has. Uh, another very common problem, you have clearly uh, less melatonin produced. <clears throat> You're affecting cell communications, brain waves, cell growth, human metabolism, sperm count is lowered, and you can have irreversible infertility in mice after five, uh, five generations. Uh, and of course, ch chicken embryo mortality increases by half. Uh, so and these, and we're talking about again fields that are much, much weaker than what the American standard allows for the cellular phone. We're not talking about some spectacular use of, of faulty telephones and so on. And uh, there now are a number of doctors in major Japanese cities who specialize only on cell phone effects on teenagers. Hikikomori, which is withdrawing and hiding. So uh, for lots of people who withdraw from society and hide away, uh, they shut themselves off in rooms. I, I even saw on CNN last, uh, just before the end of uh, uh, the last year, I think it was the 30th or 29th of December uh, 2005, a 
a, a program on this that even CNN picked us up, you know, that, uh, and you can see these kids, you know, 17 year olds, 18, 19 year olds, literally go into their room and then they just sort of hide in their corner, literally. They look like that. And these are kids who, who would have been brilliant in class uh, just a few years ago and so on. Uh, and that seems to be all coinciding with cell phones. And the people who use most cell phones are children. Uh, they, uh, for now in Canada, for example, uh, for 40% of all children, uh, cell phones are the means of communication. They don't even bother using get a telephone. And I can imagine very shortly, uh, for many of us, there won't be any telephones in the future. Uh, telephone company won't even want to sell them. They, they, would, uh, they would prefer to, to go to the microwave. But even people like myself, who don't use a cell phone, and who are, do not have a microwave at all, uh, and uh, who just walk in the street, and, you know, drive around, are getting accumulated doses of microwaves of things that I never asked for. And that is like having so many x-rays, you know, like you, instead of five x-rays, you get 10 or 15, 20. And there is a certain limit to, after all the things I told you about, you're starting to break DNA in your brain, you're starting to affect your sleep, you're starting to affect a uh, lot of things uh, by, by simple fact that you've accumulated over the years. So with, with cigarette smoking, um, it's almost like we're all exposed to secondhand smoke and we have absolutely no choice about it. You know, if you're using a cell phone, you're a smoker. But if, if, if you choose not to, you're still, in, you're still exposed to that secondhand radiation, just like you would be to secondhand smoke. And what we did with cigarettes is initially we had smoke-free environments. Um, so we, I think we should do that with cell phones as well. There should be smoke-free areas on a, in a restaurant, or there should be um, um, wireless-free areas in a restaurant, um, on a subway, um, you know, on a train, for example, when people use those modes of transit. Um, and I think eventually, you know, there'll be entire areas that will be wireless, free of wireless uh, technology, simply because people won't be able to tolerate it anymore. Okay.